Good morning, everyone. This is Clara with Card Stampin' with Clara. Hope you're doing well today. I'm back today to share some more cards with you. Um, I do want to mention that um, I have a host code that if you should need to purchase something, please use the code if it's under $150. If you would, please push the subscribe button. I'd appreciate that too. That helps me. And it also allows you to um, get notifications so that you will be able to get my videos without uh, missing any of them, if you enjoy seeing them. And I hope you do. So, um, I will mention that this is celebration. It goes on for one more month, the month of September, and then there won't be any um, gifts uh, to go along with purchases. Um, Stamp It Up does this. I think they're gonna do it twice a year now, but uh, traditionally they've only done it one time a year. And if you uh, would like to purchase something, uh, a $50 purchase will get you um, a choice of uh, some stamp sets or um, some paper packs or what have you in the celebration catalog. You've got some to choose from. And there's a couple of items that require a $100 purchase. So it's just whatever you need and, and if you need something. But uh, if you do, I'd appreciate your business and I'd appreciate uh, you using the host code. Now, if it goes above $150, by all means, don't use it so you can take advantage of some stamping dollars and get some free product. Okay, enough said about the business end of it. Let's talk about the cards we're going to make today. This is the one we're going to make. Um, it's just uh, got Merry Christmas on the outside. It's got a cute little snowbird. And uh, I have some uh, DSP from the Christmas Tidings Pack, or Tidings of Christmas Pack, excuse me. And um, I used the Evening Evergreen on this as the base color. And um, some silver touches and what have you. So... Uh, this is the card we're going to make. On the inside, it says, Wishing your family health and happiness throughout the coming year. So, I'm going to set this over. And I'm going to show you um, what we're um, going to be using today. And I'm going to show you one other item so you can see it because it's in one of the other cards. Um, we're focusing on the Happy Holly Days uh, stamp set. It's a nice cling set as you can see, and um, there's several sentiments, sharing the promise of the season for you, happy Christmas, Christmas blessings to you and yours, Noel, wishing your family health and happiness throughout the coming year. And it also has a stamp for the holly and the Noel. So uh, I wanted to show you that. That's what, you know, we're gonna be predominantly using this. But I do want you to see that this stamp set comes with a um, um, punch, which is this holly punch. It punches out a border. And I've got one card where I punched out a border so you can see what it looks like. But um, as a bundle, you save 10%. You don't have to buy both. You can buy the stamp set or the punch separately. But... Um, it's still, you know, you need to, um, I wanted you to know what it, what it's going to look like. Um, I borrowed the Merry Christmas from this sparkle of the season. Personally, I like Merry Christmas. Happy Christmas is fine, but, you know, for me, I just like that. And I'm going to use a lot of these Christmas cards. So I borrowed that. You wouldn't have to use it, but I did today. Comes from the sparkle of the season. And I also used... The Christmas season bundle. Um, I used a couple of the of the pine cones, um, what I would call something that looks like a pine uh, sprigs, and then I think I used um, this one, and this one, and this one for um, the foliages. And I also used uh, the dies to cut out those with. Um, this is a nice set where you have, um, well, you have two different sizes of pine cones, and then you have um, this die and, and this die and this die that I actually use plus the pine cone. 
So, as you can see, it's got a nice long uh, label uh, die and then a whole set of dies. And this is called the uh, seasoned label dies. So, this is one that I use a lot for the support of other uh, stamp sets. And I use one other thing. It seems like, well, no, two other things. Excuse me. Uh, I used this die from the Flourishing, Forever Flourishing um, die set. Yeah, Forever Flourishing dies. I thought I was leaving something out, but apparently not. But I used that one die. So um, this is one that I have had in my group for a good while now, and uh, I enjoy using it a lot. The one I didn't lay out is this one. It's a relatively new one. Usually you think of these um, images are coming from embossing, but this is a die, and it cuts out um, or stitches. I don't know what you would call it, but it gives it the impression of, of leaves, and you'll see that in this particular one. You don't have to have it, but but it's pretty, and I wanted you to see it. So, you know, like I said, it's just a matter of priority and what you would like. So I'll lay those over, and then we'll talk about these other cards and then go back to the one and make the one that I first showed you. Um, this is the second card that I made. Uh, this is soft succulent color, and this is the evening evergreen color. The new, one, two of the new colors for the for the next two years. I also used uh, the evening evergreen and stamped these holly leaves and layered them and uh, the pine, and I stamped that with the evening evergreen as well as the sentiment. And um, I colored a little bluebird to go in the center. I just made my own wreath. Um, what I did was I cut a big circle from the circling dies, and then I just used it as a guideline to go around and to make it, uh, you know, to, to layer those so that they came out nice. So that's what I did with that one, and I have the same sentiment on the inside. So I'll lay that one over. This one I embossed in silver. Um, I'll try to tilt it a little bit so maybe you can see the uh, glistening silver. Uh, this paper is from the Peaceful Place uh, 12 by 12 pack, and um, it's got silver and gray in it, and it's it's pretty paper. And um, I stamped one of the um, holly, uh, you know, from the set, and it um, is also embossed in the silver, and then I colored it in. Um, this is the... Um, shaded spruce color, and I cut out some silver holly from the foil sheets, and also embossed the Christmas blessings to you in silver. So, that was the, um, what I like for this one, and um, with the same sentiment on the inside. I don't need to say that again. So, that's another one. This one is also embossed. Um, it's actually embossed in two ways. The bird is embossed in gold, and the Noel is embossed in white. I used some of the specialty foil, uh, gold foil paper, which I like. I think it made it look really pretty. I cut out a piece from uh, that Flourishing Forever set again, and then I also used those three pieces of foliage that I was showing you that I used on the one for today. And uh, this paper came also from the Tidings of Christmas. This is uh, Evening Evergreen and pretty much the same on the inside. All right, here's the one that I used to make the, I mean, I used the punch to make. Uh, this is Shaded Spruce. And as you can see, I just used a white background and layered it over the evening I mean, uh, the shaded spruce, not the evening gravy green. Uh, I layered it over the shaded spruce, and then I glued in the little red berries and put a Merry Christmas down through the center. So I thought that made a pretty pretty card. Um, so that was the one that I had that was horizontal. This one 
it's probably going to appear to you that this color is red. Uh, I noticed that when uh, I got my thumbnail for my video, uh, my sister does those for me. She put she puts them uh, into the um, a program that she's got, and it looked red, but it's not. And and the reason it's not is because this bird I colored in Cajun craze to make it look like a real bluebird. And so I use Cajun craze with this uh, blue. Uh, this is navy, night of navy underneath. And this piece came from the, uh, let's see, Whimsy and Wonder 12 by 12 pack. It's got little trees and stars and things on the back of that. And um, I used some more of the um, foliage again to, uh, you know, to put the bird against. I got a little piece of foil in the back, and the Cajun craze um, goes around, and, and it actually looks nice with this blue. I, I, um, I, I kept kind of, oops, I kept trying to decide exactly what color to use. And I didn't think that the red really looked great against the Cajun craze, so I just decided to, you know, use the whole thing um, with the Cajun craze, and 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 that worked great. Uh, I also used these little uh, metallic silver um, gems, I guess you'd call them. Uh, little, um, these are the silver ones. They also come with the gold ones, and I thought I'd. I, there again, I used these because I didn't think red and Cajun craze went together very well. And I think overall it turned out pretty well. Um, same on the inside as I have done before. We've got a birthday card in the middle of all of this. I've got a little yellow bird this time. And this um, leaf uh, design came from the... Um, uh, Beauty of Tomorrow, I believe it's called, set, and I just, uh, after I punched out the, or run it through the die, then I used a smooth die to cut that out and lay it down the, uh, balmy blue to make it look like that it was the sky shining through. And uh, it says, may your birthday be memorable, rest and relax, you deserve it. And um, this color is balmy blue, and this is another one of those pieces of uh, silver. And I, th I think that the um, the silver looked really pretty with this, and added a special touch. And of course, the little bow. So I, I hope you like that one. But I wanted you to see that, even though I've made mostly Christmas cards this time, uh, you know the bird can be used for a uh, birthday card too, or something else. Um, this one. <laughs> Um, it is, well, I, I guess I put my own little touch on this one. I, uh, cut out, free-handed, uh, a stump, an old stump, and, um, it, they're not hard to do. You just put a little curve in them, and then I cut to make the look, look to make it look like the snow had, had run down the sides, and the little bird has found a a berry and a leaf and it's it's a snowy day and uh, so I embossed the bird I embossed the snowflakes in behind in gold and this is gold as you can see and the Merry Christmas is done in gold so oh these are the little gold gems that come in that pack with the silver ones and uh, so I you know like I said, this has got my own little touch on it, but, uh, you know, I had to, I was uh, trying to decide what else I could do, and so I came up with that. All right, enough said. Uh, I will say this. The birds, the coloring of the birds, I just, I went to the, uh, well, to my phone, actually, and Googled, uh, you know, little sparrows and things like that, birds that were shaped like this, just to get some ideas for coloring. And the reason that I chose this one for the one to do today is because it's really easy to color this one. I'll, the only color that I used on this one was the dark smoky slate. 
and I let and it has a you know a, a white belly and um, I guess there's I guess there is a touch of the soft suede there on the beak but uh, as you can see that's you know that's not hard to do so all right let me uh, lay out my stuff here and uh, show you everything I'm going to use to um, make this card and we'll get at it and it won't shouldn't take too long today I don't think all right first thing we start with always is the card base and it is five and a, excuse me five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter and as I do many times I just went ahead and fix the inside which is nothing but a piece of um, three and three quarters by five in the basic white and then you will need two of the evening evergreen uh, pieces and they are both cut at four by five and a quarter and I hope you can see how pretty that leaf design is in there I'm going to hold it up near the camera and and hope and hopes that you can see it so that's going to be our background we're going to have a piece of real red cardstock that's three and a quarter by four that's that's to um, be a border to this DSP designer series paper which is three inches by four and it will be layered on like that then the um, after I stamp the Merry Christmas in I think I've got a hair there excuse me I'm shedding like a dog I suppose <laughs> oh mercy um, the Merry Christmas I, the, the, the end piece, after I stamped it, I cut it down to one half inch by four inches. And then the red piece, the border piece, is three quarters inches by four. But I will have these on my uh, website under the instructions and supply list. All you have to do is click on it and you can actually um, print the list out. All right, let's see. You're going to need about a quarter of a sheet, which is this, about that size, for uh, of soft succulent for all these little pieces of foliage. Uh, you can get them all cut out of about a quarter of a sheet. And I stamp those in the evening evergreen. So I'm going to lay these over here. That one goes down at the bottom. Okay, those are the two pieces at the top. Okay. And you're going to need, um, let me turn this over, about three by three piece of foil, three inches by three inches to cut that piece. You're going to need about two inches by three inch piece of, of, um, soft suede and I stamped that in early espresso those are the small pine cones and for the little bird um, let me see here you're going to need about a three by four inch piece of the basic white and uh, as you can see, I did not cut out around the little bird's feet because it's going to be covered up. All right, so let's get started and put this together. Um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to glue this piece of DSP onto the red background. The real red is what it is. Put a little glue around here. If I can get this lined up real straight, I believe that's all right. Okay, all right. 
Now we're gonna take this piece and we're gonna glue it onto the piece that has the um, leaf. Uh, it just looks like the leaves, are, the leaves are stitched on it. We're gonna glue that about in the middle. So we'll put a little glue on the back of this. I had hoped to have this on a little bit sooner, but my daughter's, um, the person that works with our little grandson um, was out yesterday afternoon and she needed a backup for babysitting. And I have, uh, I had just started, I mean, I had babysat him up until last Last week, this is just the second week, and uh, she got sick, so I may have him again today, I'm not sure. But, uh, so I got a little bit behind what I had anticipated. All right, next thing, the first thing, I, as I recall, that I put on was these. And folks, when, you're, when you are um, making cards, and you're not following a specific card, lay everything kind of out so you can kind of see what it's gonna look like before you start gluing it down. Um, let me get a little wipe here and we'll clean off the end of this glue tube so I don't get too much on the next one. All right. But it really helps to lay things out and kind of see how they're going to look before you start gluing them down. I mean, that might be kind of a redundant remark, but maybe it's obvious to most people, but maybe there's somebody that wouldn't think to do that. Okay. All right. Then I put the little silver piece. The only thing about working with foil, let me warn you, if you've not used foil before, be very stingy with your with your glue when you're gluing it on because if you get a little bit on the foil, it's kind of difficult to get it off. About the only way I've been able to get any off is by using a baby wipe, and then you've got to be really careful. You'll damage your paper, and and it just, you know, gets worse from there. But, you know, just be mindful. That's all I'm saying. Just be mindful. I'm going to turn this a little bit and put it in here kind of like that. Give this little bird a background. Now then, we will take um, this piece. This Forever Foliage set is really nice. I use it a lot for different backgrounds. You know, a lot of times the the sets don't always come with with things like this, and it's it's nice to have a set that you can uh, draw from. Okay, let me put that a little bit like this. I hope this will come out okay. And we'll turn this one. It's, it kind of looks like it's going in the opposite direction. And if you notice, I'm really using these reverse tweezers. Like I said, you can't get them from stamping up. But uh, they are invaluable when you're making cards. I'm sure they're used for other things too, but uh, okay. All right, Mr. Bird. Whoops. Or Mrs. Bird. You see how the um, blends will sometimes bleed through a little bit? You might want to lay something under your. Um, work area when you use those. 
and I don't know if everybody has used blends or not. They're alcohol markers, and uh, they dry easily, and they, they're called blends because they, they blend in pretty well. And with this one, I just I just used the dark one. I think these little birds, I don't know how you pronounce it. I think it's spelled J-U-N-C-O. I don't know if it's Junko or what, but um, but yeah, these little birds are uh, are um, little, call little snowbirds, and we see them here in North Carolina in the winter time. I haven't seen any this year though. That's well. I guess maybe last, I guess we hadn't got to cold weather yet though here. Um I was thinking about last year. I guess I did see some last year sometime. You they usually come through at some some part of the season. You'll see several of them out in the yard. Okay. As you can see, this is not a hard card to make. And uh, once you get everything cut out, it goes pretty fast. in there something like that yeah okay and I'm gonna put dimensionals on the back of this I didn't think to do it ahead of time but um, with all that bulk and uh, right there it's not going to glue down uh, smooth so I'll take my pick a tool here and I kind of staggered the dimensional so I get support all the way up and down. It's not room really for two rows, but um, by doing that, it supports both sides. I might be out from under the camera now. Maybe I may be talking about something that you can't see. I hope not. Okay, but you see how I kind of zigzagged them in and out. Yeah. And these are the dimensionals. Okay. I guess I'll need this to pop these off with. We have been really fortunate here in well, we're kind of in the triad of North Carolina. We're not not near the coast, and we're not in the mountains. And, I mean, I was raised in the mountains. I love it up there, but um, it looks like all we're going to get is a little drizzle out of this hurricane. And uh, there's so many people that have suffered, as a, or are suffering, I should say, not have. It's going to be ongoing for a while, bless their hearts. We didn't even get much rain out of it here. We're just right on the edge. Well, I am trying. <laughs> a little too far up, a little too far down. I'm sure you don't ever have that happen. Okay, I think that looks good. Press that out. Put this on the outside of this card base, and we'll be done. If you want to fix a an envelope, I didn't cut a piece for the video today, but um, if you cut a piece that's two and three-eighths wide and about six inches long, you can use a tape runner and you can look at one of the other videos if you really want to see how it's done. But um, you can put some of this paper on the back of your envelope and make it look really nice. Hmm. 
Okay, let's see. All right, I believe we're good. All right. Okay, all done. And if you wanted to add a gem or something, you could. I didn't in this one. It's got right many things on it, so it's just up to you. Um, I appreciate you spending a few minutes with me and uh, seeing me put this card together. Maybe it's been helpful to you. I certainly hope so. Um, there again, I just remind you one more time about celebration. It's going to be going on for about another month, and then it will be gone. So, if you're interested in, um, you know, making cards, it's a, it's a really good time to consider uh, purchasing some things because you get the extra bonuses. Uh, it's my policy. If you order $50 worth, I'll give you a $10 uh, item of your choice, and then you still get all the benefits that Stampin' Up! gives you with the $50 purchase. The other thing I might mention is it's a great time to join as a demonstrator. Um, the benefits, first of all, initially you get $125 worth of product for $99. And you get to choose your starter kit, whatever you want to start with. You also get to choose a bundle from Stampin' Up, which is worth anywhere from, I don't know, 45 to 60-ish dollars, thereabouts. And um, there's 12 bundles they'll allow you to choose from. A lot of them are in the mini catalog, or maybe they're all in the mini catalog. And uh, there's some nice ones for Christmas. It'd be a good time. The benefit of joining as a demonstrator is you get initially 20% off your purchases. If you become uh, a step up uh, to a bronze, what they call um, a, a, a bronze status, then you get 25% off. Uh, the only downside is that you make a commitment to uh, purchase $300 a quarter, $300 less your discount. And the fact of the matter is, if you try it for one month, I mean one quarter, and you don't like it after your initial uh, purchase, then you just, you just don't do it anymore. There's no... Um, there's no, um, um, uh, penalties. You just don't have to be a demonstrator anymore. So there's really no downside from the standpoint. You don't even have to spend that $300 if you don't want to. I mean, you, it's just you, the, the, the only real purchase you have to make is the $99. And that way you get, you get, uh, like I said, $125 worth of product. A bundle worth, like I said, forty to sixty dollars, and a ten dollar gift from me, and what have you. So, uh, there are benefits to um, to being a demonstrator, and you can just be a demonstrator for your own personal use. You don't have to really sell a lot of product. You can just say, "I'm going to be a demonstrator," so I, because I enjoy doing it, and and uh, I can get a discount that way. So it's up to you. Uh, just just saying, you know, just letting you know. Uh, it's my job to let you know what the options are. So, I thank you for joining me. And uh, there again, if you hadn't pushed the subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it if you would. And I will be back just as quick as I can with another set of cards. Thank you.